this is probably the biggest transformation in the railways and in the possibilities for economic regeneration. It's the most exciting development in railways. We are going to get this done. done. We'll make sure our country and our cities are connected with success and we will have in place the railway capacity that our future generations need for their success. Pendant estimate says the full project could cost more than a hundred billion. HS2 is the biggest piece of infrastructure we have ever done in this country for a century. We've been told now the northern leg of High Speed Rail, which is the line linking Birmingham to Manchester, is going to be scrapped. I am cancelling the rest of the HS2 project. We will reinvest every single penny, 36 billion pounds in hundreds of new transport projects in the north and the midlands across the country. Why is it that people in the north are always forced to choose? Why are we always treated as second-class citizens when it comes to transport? I think it's a way of keeping the north down and making sure that they can't prosper. Manifesto. 10,000 tonnes of concrete. Sounds about right. 45 to 55 billion pounds. No, wait, 150 minute walk from New Street. Then a clandestine but costly hour to arrive six miles outside of London. Transfer to transfer to transfer of hands. Nothing is ever finished in this country over a decade of empty excuses. For what? For our future? That's the first time the American public actually saw what our justified bills looked like. The American government pulled out of Vietnam because we spoke up. Everyone can see what's happening in house. Have you seen the poor six months in the wrecked home schools, hospitals, the dead toddlers, the dead children in the arms of their screaming parents? And what do we do? Post about it, send a few dollars if we're able. In the meantime, the same tax dollars that were used to stop Nazis and pay for your houses are now being used to fund this Holocaust, while most of my generation won't even get to own a house. Your government listened to you, but now you're the government, and you won't listen to us. There's no way for us to act, and people who do act, they're still fined, arrested, physically beaten. You have less need to kill us because we can't even afford to organize and speak out to strike because rent, food, medical expenses, and pay. Rent for us is ten times than your mortgages were, and we get fired for unionizing. Even if we did have the means to speak out, we saw what happened to those of you who did. This is an authoritarian regime. This is totalitarian. We find compensation that is quite close to a billion. Commissioners are being parachuted in to preside over decision making and to, you know, try to right this ship. 
undoubtedly there will be a lot of changes there will be a sell-off of authority owned assets there will be job cuts and there will likely be rises in taxes whilst most will observe a mismanagement at a local level and in fact michael gove actually said the following he said poor leadership weak governance woeful mismanagement of employee relations and ineffective service delivery have harmed the city the one constant is there has been a failure to deliver for residents who deserve better and you know what more or less i will agree but there's one large part of this that um everyone seems to be missing out. The role of central government spending, or lack thereof. Between 2010 and 2021, ministers more than halved grants for local authorities in real terms. So councils did introduce cuts and efficiencies and also raise taxes to try to recover some of those losses. But in real terms, spending still, spending power rather, still fell by about 25%. And whilst we can obviously point at mismanagement, there are many well-run councils that are also saying that they are looking to run out of money very, very soon. Many of those that are issuing warnings now have actually run out of services that they can actually cut. One of the big issues is that funding for local government is actually very badly matched to local needs. So one of the biggest costs that um, councils are struggling with are social services and children's services. For the moment, they are allowed to um, keep, for example, SEND, which is special educational needs and disability spending, off their balance sheet so everything will balance. That was due to end in 2025 and what the government will likely do is not give them more money for these things. They will probably just extend that deadline because the government's position would be very difficult if a wave of 114s are issued. So what better to do is just paper over the cracks and hope for the best. Birmingham will live on, so will the city's residents, into the start of 2024, just a mere six years before HS2 is operational and the council is no longer in debt. I hope the city can be mine and yours and for everyone. I hope we can coexist and stand up for those who are marginalised. I hope we can be the voice for those who are not heard. That was me, Abigail Braithwaite. Back to you in the studio.